He's Nicholas Mac. back. I'm back, back. In my house. Yeah, in my house, in my house. Now, I don't normally do um, how-to videos as such, okay? But in some of the comments the other day, uh, we was looking at and about new users and how would they install their first distro if they've never, ever even touched a Linux distribution before. So you know what? I thought, let's kind of help these new users out that want to come on from, uh, say, Windows or Mac or whatever or want to get rid of their phone or their tablet and want to try a real computer but don't want to pay the tax on top of that and they want to try Linux. Even if it's for your curiosity's sake or they just want to save money or they just want to do it. How would they do it? If there's plenty of videos online. But let's do a current one. Yeah. Dozo. Okay, so you're thinking about trying Linux out for the very first time, but you know very little about it. You've watched some videos online, you're still not sure. You've seen some distributions available. The most current one you've seen is Ubuntu, and you're thinking, what is Ubuntu? Hmm, there's other ones called Debian. And there's loads and loads. There's people going on about Arch Linux and Manjaro and Linux Mint. There's loads to choose. But what you've done is, well, Ubuntu's possible. I'm going to try that one. That's the one that's most popular that I've seen, and some of my friends have used it, and they say it's okay. So, let's see what happens when you, as a newbie, or a new user, install Ubuntu. Let's go. Okay guys, so you've put in your disk, or your USB drive, and this is one of the first screens you get from Ubuntu. This is a Ubuntu 18.04, okay? So it doesn't matter where you are in the world, there will be a language for you. But as I'm English, I'm going to click on English. Now you can trial it or install it straight away. Say you just want to try it first. What we're going to do is just click on Try Ubuntu, okay? And what will happen is, it will do stuff, just like so, if I clicked it correctly in the first place. See? You're a new user. Didn't know that was going to happen, did you? And this is the first screen that goes through, and you're wondering, oh my god, I've crashed my computer, look, it's gone black. Oh, well, I've got stuff come through. Resultage, you say to yourself. Mmm. Right, let's go through the screen. Ubuntu has a known desktop, Unity-like. Unity is an old uh, desktop you'd have a few years ago. But I'm not going to go on about that because you're a new user. You want to know what you get, okay? So up here, I can click here to install it to your hard drive, whether it be a spinning disk or an SSD or an M.2 drive. If you don't know what they are, don't worry about it. It's just where all your stuff is, okay? All your stuff is going to be there. You've got Firefox for your web browser, you know what that's all about. Thunderbird for your mail, that's just a mail client. If you've got Google Mail or anything like that, you don't have to use this if you don't want to. But it's a good addition, I find. You've got your file system here, and here we have Rhythmbox for all your musical needs. A LibreOffice writer, the Ubuntu Software Center, a help, and you do get this Amazon thing, but we can turn that off, don't worry about it. Now you're thinking, oh, it's a bit bright. Well, you can change the colours if you want to. But if you go down here to the bottom left corner, we can show applications. So if we click here, these are all the applications that come with Ubuntu 18.04. Okay? Now that's quite a lot, isn't it? So if we get videos there, to so play videos, the to-do list, a Sudoku game, software updater, screenshots, so you can get a screenshot, shop well to get all your photos in one place, mines game, mahjong, logs, a LibreOffice suite, so you don't have to have, say, Microsoft Office or anything like that. There is everything already here for you. You don't need nothing else, okay? As a document viewer for PDFs. It's a webcam application called Cheese. It's all here for you. You don't need anything else, guys. Nothing whatsoever. So, impressed? And you're going, oh, I'll tell you what. I'll just click over here. What's this writer thing like? You say to yourself. Remember, LibreOffice is available for Windows and Mac, as far as I'm aware. Unless they've stopped that, really recently and it's very very similar this all comes on the disc on your usb key or your cd stroke dvd disc okay so we're going to install it you ready now once you do this it could be no turning back you may never go back to your other print system i never and that was donkeys years ago so i'm going to click here double click sorry and what will happen is the installer will start working can you see the swirly things going around 
and this is where we pick out a language again which is English okay so that's my language if you're French choose French if you're Greek choose that if you're Italian Italiano of course you know what I'm saying. Next is continue, okay? Right, I don't want English US, but I might want Esperanto. No, I won't, I just want English UK. Because I'm from the UK, funnily enough, you couldn't really tell by my accent really, could you? Okay, so we've done that. We've set our keyboard to where we want them. Continue, okay. I would say have a normal installation, okay? You can do multi-boot options here where you can have more than one installation of an operating system. But we're not going to do that now because you've not even installed Linux before. But you're almost done already. So with our normal installation, we get web browser, utilities, software, office and games, and the media players. Nice. Okay. So we want, isn't it, really? And this is going to download updates while we're installing. Which is nice, isn't it? We're going to click on install. Or continue, should I say. And this is what you want to do for your very first installation. If you want to change it afterwards and do a reinstallation, that's entirely up to you. See how comfortable you are using a Linux distro, or especially Ubuntu themselves. So we're going to erase disk and install Ubuntu. That's good for me. We'll click on install now. And here's the partitions you're going to have for your hard disk. Okay, so it all depends how big the disk is on your system. We're going to go and continue. And now it's going to ask me where I am in the whole wide world. Okay, so there we go. I'm in Londinium. I'm not really. But that's my time zone, which is GMT zero at the moment, okay? I'm going to click on continue. And now it's going to ask for my password. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly put this in for you. Okay, so that's my username I'm going to use. And that's my computer name, what I've named it. You can name it whatever you want to, okay? But normally it will pick a little name for you. And I put my password in here. I've done it all while you couldn't look. Because I don't want you seeing my special things, baby. No, okay. So we're ready to go. Ready? Continue. And off we go. As you can see, it's almost finished copying the files anyway. So let's copy them over from the device that you used, which is either a DVD or a USB stick. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have some nice squash while we're waiting. Now, I could, in theory, cut this video if I wanted to, okay? And so you wouldn't see me installing it. But I want to give you a good idea of how long it's going to take, okay? So that's Sunday. It's... 20.07 and we're just going to wait a little while until the next screen here comes up and what, until it starts installing the actual system so it's finished copying the files now at 20.07 okay it's finished finished i'll have another drink while i'm waiting i don't mind mmm nice and now it's going to install the system and you'll get these screens flash by as you can see here and we'll tell you all about it Remember, just because you're not using Windows or Mac doesn't mean you can't have Spotify or Skype or OBS or Telegram. Most applications are supported, but not everyone, okay? Not everyone. What it's doing now, as you can see, is retrieving all their files for the extra ones it needs to install. There may be a few more. Should we hang on? Well, hang on. Yeah, we don't mind hanging on, do we? It's scanning to get some security updates. So let's be, all be up to date, okay? There we go. Boom. It's creating the user, so it's creating me. It took a few minutes so far. This is how quick it is to install a Linux distribution. Some are even quicker than this, okay? Tiny Core is about five seconds. This one's a bit longer. But most Debian based distributions on a recently modern system are not going to take long at all. Compare that to Windows, okay? Which is going to take you quite a long time, okay? Well, I say long. <clears throat> It's going to take you longer than this, quite a lot longer. Okay, the last Windows installation I done for somebody on a laptop in total took nearly three hours after all the updates were done. Yes, the machine wasn't that new, but it was a quad core machine, so it should have been okay. But by the time it does all its stuff and keeps rebooting all the time while you're installing, mm, it takes ages. Whereas here, it's now configuring our hardware already. We're enough, near enough ready to go, to be honest with you. We're near enough there. Can you see how easy that is? Super easy. Super easy. I'm loving it, baby. Loving it, loving it, loving it. Yeah. So Almost finished. 2009. So, so far, including all the typing and the, me waffling on, we're down to about five minutes for a complete install of a complete operating system with stuff you can use. Okay. There are other ones that are a lot smaller and lighter, 
but you may have to build them up yourself. It's entirely up to you. Yeah, entirely up to you. There we go. Come on. We're going up that list. We're going up that list. This is what you have to watch while you're installing, by the way. And me waffling. I'm glad it doesn't take too long, otherwise my voice would go and I'd get bored. But lucky enough, I'm not doing it. So, almost there. It's removing stuff it doesn't need, whatever Woga man is, okay. I imagine that's languages, but it looks like it, okay. By the way, you can have Google Chrome as your browser if you want to. I know a lot of people on other distributions, sorry, operating systems, use Chrome. Uh, you can't get Edge, but that's going over to a WebKit based one anyway, so I wouldn't really worry about that too much. You get Chromium, Vivaldi, Waterfox, Sea Monkey. The list goes on and on and on. Do you see what I mean? Of course you do. So, almost finished. We've been doing this for around about seven to eight minutes, something like that. So, and I know we're almost done there. It's just removing stuff that it doesn't need, okay? Obviously, if you're on an old dual core machine, it will work, but the installation will take a slightly longer, okay? Slightly longer. But as you can see by these fly throughs here, as you're waiting and you think it's going to take ages, there's bits and bobs to read if you want to, just to help you out. Now, we're in DPKG now, so I know we're nearly at the end. So we're nearly finished. All your drivers will be installed for you already for audio and video. If you've got a proprietary card... Oh, too late. I'll carry on. If you've got a proprietary card, say in video or on AMD, you can go to the add uh, drivers and graphics drivers and audio drivers and etc. etc. and install them as well. That's all you have to do. We are now done. Okay. I'm just going to continue testing for the time being so you can see what we got here. This is still running from the USB stroke disk. Once we restart the machine, it'll boot up, ask you for your password, and you're done. That's how you get into Linux really easily in a really, really short time. Sneaky little sound. Let's go. Bye bye.